I tried beating Terraria, but I am locked inside of a grid. Each grid costs more and more money to unlock, making gold coins our most valuable resource. How will I possibly beat Terraria? Well, let's find out. I started off by spawning in our very humble, very small Terraria cube. I mean, as soon as I spawned, you can't really see the grid, but very soon after, I moved over to the corners of the world and realized that there is indeed a grid, which we need a special item to access and unlock. This item was essentially the cell phone that was for free of crafting using a workbench. So I quickly made myself a house, made myself a workbench, and made myself the little cell phone that we can use to unlock every single grid. I went over to the right and checked our very first grid, which cost us 50 gold coins. Later in the video, I do indeed make that price go down to 20 for the first one just because it was literally unbearable. So yeah, don't hate me for that because it, this video probably would have taken me like 100 hours to do if it wasn't for that. Also, I do want to say this video is inspired by Happy Days Gridlock Challenge. So go check out the original. I don't think he's completely done the playthrough, but he has a whole different set of rules that he's playing by and it's not modded Terraria. So it's a completely different video and I highly recommend you go check that one out. This is just my little unique spin on it. So I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, I did the basic Terraria thing that I usually do, which is make a bunch of NPC houses in the shape of a Squidward's nose, and then I went mining. I could only really dig down like a hundred blocks below the surface, as as soon as I got down there, we encountered another grid, and this is where I realized that this challenge is going to be much harder than I actually originally thought. See, I thought the grid would go all the way down to the underworld, giving us unlimited resources so that we could just sell a bunch of ores to make more money, but apparently you cannot do that. So I started chopping down a bunch of trees and I was super anxious because I had no clue how we're gonna make any money. Keep in mind, we need 50 gold to unlock our very first grid. Since I opened up a starter bag, I used up a spelunker potion and then went mining and picked up basically every single ore, every single pot, everything there was within the underground that I thought I could sell. After this, I realized that this isn't going to give me any money. So what I did instead is I watched Happy Day's video and checked out how he was making money. Apparently he made a little graveyard by him where then he would kill a bunch of enemies. So I decided to do the same thing myself. I built myself more houses and then I just started jumping off the houses, committing games end until I had amassed a bunch of tombstones. I then placed all of the tombstones down in one very particular area, then I picked them back up and I put them even further away from my NPC houses because I didn't want the fog eclipsing every single place that I was chilling at, but this strategy did work. We were summoning in ghosts and they would drop coins, and what I mean by coins is they would drop like one silver. So yeah, we are going to have to grind for quite a while. Anyways, I did this for a bit and then I decided, you know what, I'm gonna do the unthinkable and I went fishing. I caught a bunch of basses and that was kind of a waste of time. I also got myself a bunch of seaweed which proved absolutely pointless as well and essentially everything that we were catching from fishing was just garbage. There there was nothing good that we were catching. I did manage to catch a crate later within the playthrough but come on the crates give you absolutely nothing so it's also a waste of time and I was in a bit of a dilemma. I had no idea how we're gonna make money. So the next best thing I could do is pick up animals such as bunnies and sell them for profit. That is right, animal trafficking at its finest. So after trafficking a couple of animals, I decided to go back to fishing, and once I came back to the surface, I tried to farm out more ghosts. During nighttime, there were a bunch of fireflies that popped up out of nowhere. And now see, they had two uses. We could either use them as bait, or we could sell them for quite a lot of gold. I managed to get myself over like a hundred fireflies within this one night, which I decided I would use for fishing, because honestly, it's not even worth selling them. We were gonna get like maybe three five gold or something along those lines and then I looked into how to make a crate potion because I thought hey maybe crates would be a pretty viable way of making more money but we could not access crate potions so I continued committing gay men to get myself more tombstones because I thought that would increase the spawn rates of the ghosts within the graveyard biome and apparently that's not how it worked I ended up selling all the fireflies and killing more mobs within the graveyard biome I continued this brutal strategy over and over again up until I realized okay this is stupid I need to do something else because I'm not gonna stand here for 50 hours to unlock my first grid. Upon opening my starter bag in the very start of the video, I actually got myself the King Slime Summon. So being the big tough boy I am, I realized, hey, let's build a tiny little arena and fight King Slime. How hard could he possibly be? Little did I know he was quite difficult with not even half HP and no weapons and no armor. So yeah, I've made a very big oopsie and I died to King Slime. Kind of pathetic, huh? Somewhere along the lines, I did manage to reduce the price of the very first grid to 20 gold instead of 50, just because I thought that that was more fair. And another rule that I must explain is after we buy either four or five grids, the price 
doubles. So we can buy four grids up until the grid price turns to 40, which I think is quite fair as the further we expand, the more access to resources that we have and thus the more access to money we have. Anyways, after grinding a while, I managed to unlock the right grid as I saw a corruption biome right beside us. My idea behind this is I would unlock the corruption biome, unlock a demon altar, get myself a bunch of slimes, craft the summon for the king slime and then farm him until we can open up another area. And essentially I would farm out bosses non-stop to get enough money to open up different areas within the game. That's kind of the main strategy I use to grind out money, but right now we still don't have access to any type of boss summon besides the king slime, so we're gonna have to grind out even more. I dug around the newly bought grid for a bunch of resources and I was mildly underwhelmed as there was practically nothing of use except for a couple of iron, some copper, some tin, you know, like the most horrific resources on planet earth. But at least we had enough iron to craft ourselves all of the basic utilities that we need such as our anvils and all of that fun stuff. Anyways I continued grinding and then for another 20 bucks gold coins I unlocked the grid right below where we were digging our elevator and where we were previously fishing. This gained me access to some gold and one grid below I found myself some rubies which are actually going to come in useful as we need those to craft the king slime summon. So my goals for now were to get the rubies and then head further over to the right unlock the grids there so we can unlock the demon altar and then craft ourselves the summon for the king slime and the eye of cthulhu once we get enough lenses i scoured the entire underground here within the grid that we just had unlocked and i actually found myself a gold chest which was pretty neat and i also found a life crystal that was in the grid right below us where the rubies were i continued killing more mobs farming out getting myself a bunch of good gold killed myself some ghosts spent a bunch of time within the corruption biome as i think the spawn rates there are increased and also the eater of worlds drop far more money than the ghost so it was just more worthwhile to chill over there and then once i had enough money i bought the grid over to the right near where the demon altar is we still need to unlock one more grid before we can actually reach the demon altar so that was kind of sad and unlucky but we have more than enough time to grind out more money during this time I was grinding and grinding until I got enough money to open up the grid that expanded our elevator, gained us access to rubies and a life crystal. So that's exactly what I did and I went straight for the rubies. I picked up the rubies, picked up the life crystal and also dug up a bunch of demonite as I had a golden pickaxe. I managed to explore all of the underground there and I dug up as much ores as I could because of course I needed to sell all of them to make my money back, you know, just basic economics. I then proceeded back to the surface to catch more fireflies because I knew I could sell them for a massive profit and then once I had enough money I went back over to the right side of the world and bought the grid that was right under the corruption. This finally gave us access to a demon altar. So I gathered all my resources and crafted myself the summon for king slime and along with this I crafted myself the infinite summon for the king slime and then proceeded to fight it. I got myself some armor and I summoned him in and using the leather whip I started whipping him non-stop. Near the end of the fight where he was super close to dying. I managed to get hit by him and I died because I was on 1 HP, but hey, what can you do? I'm unprepared, I only have like half a set of silver armor, it's the best I could do and I mean I have an infinite summon so I can keep on trying over and over again. I decided to go for a demon bow and use fire arrows to try to take out the king slime and this time it worked we managed to take him out and we got a little bit of gold now see i thought the king slime would drop us far more gold than he actually did he dropped you like two gold once you defeated him and selling all of his loot would give you a max of like three gold so every time we defeated the king slime would get anywhere from two to five gold that is barely even the costs of the arrows themselves because i was buying arrows from the merchant so this wasn't the most viable strategy of course but i mean slowly but surely we took the king slime out more and more up until we got enough money to unlock the next grids i swear i probably fought king slime like 10 different times until we had enough money it was the stupidest process of all time but hey it was literally the best that we could do i did not want to spend hours killing mobs anymore so it is what it is after this i went back to mining and bought the next grid under so we could expand our elevator i think this still cost us like 40 gold so it wasn't too bad but i used this opportunity to mine up as much ores as I could because selling ores was actually a much more viable way of making money compared to defeating the bosses. Mining up all the ores in a select grid would almost give you just enough money
money to buy the very next grid. So, killing King Slime a couple of times and digging up all the ore was a surefire way to magnify our grid progression. I basically dug up every single ore there was within that chunk and proceeded to craft myself the Malice Yo-Yo and fight King Slime more and more until we had enough money to unlock the next grid. Upon unlocking the next grid, I was actually thrusted into a mushroom biome with a bunch of heart crystals and a couple of chests. So I opened up the chests, looted all of that fun stuff, I got myself a couple of bars which is pretty nice, I could sell that for some huge profits, and then I dug around to get myself more ores. I ended up fighting King Slime a little bit more because that was one of the best ways to make money of course. And after this I actually got enough lenses to craft a summon for the Eye of Cthulhu. So I fought the Eye of Cthulhu which didn't even take much longer than the King Slime. And this is where I realized that the Eye of Cthulhu was far more efficient at making money than the King Slime ever will be. We could sell all of the materials that the Eye of Cthulhu dropped us which was primarily the Demonite for much more money. And this is where I had the great idea of trying to defeat the Eater of Worlds. See if we can get a bunch of demonite from the Eye of Cthulhu that sells for a lot of money. Could you imagine how much the demonite from the Eater of Worlds would sell compared to the Eye of Cthulhu? That is correct. A lot of money. So I started blowing up all of the orbs of the Eater of Worlds so we could summon this cheeky boy in. Now see the very last orb was situated at the very bottom of the grid. If we chuck bombs we could blow it up but it would be very hard for us to get back to the surface. So I had to make a gigantic rope platform from the top of the corruption all the way down to the bottom so we could chuck a dynamite down and skirt away all the way back up to the surface in time to take out the Eater of Worlds. I got myself a musket, a bunch of arrows, I got myself a bunch of musket balls, made Naruna for the Eater of Worlds, chucked the last little bomb, and then flew my way all the way back to the surface using the rope. My fight with the giant wormy creature has begun. Using the bow I was dealing quite a bit of damage to him, then I switched over to the musket and realized that that was probably the better strategy. And using the musket and the platform that we had built, we managed to take out the Eater of Worlds, and it wasn't too difficult. I crafted myself a demonite pickaxe because I wanted to mine hellstone as I know hellstone actually sells for a lot of money. So if we can just get like an infinite obsidian source, get ourselves hellstone, we could almost unlock anything that we would need for the next like 5 grids. I defeated the king slime a bit more using the musket thinking that it would be faster and we could make more money off him but that wasn't really the case and I got quite disappointed. Once it turned to nighttime, I went to go catch a bunch of bugs and then using the fisher of souls which was the demonite fishing rod I decided to go fishing. Frankly I couldn't catch anything good so I gave up on my hopes and dreams of being a fisher and went down further into the layers of the grids. I scoured the caverns as much as I could and I found a bunch of pretty cool chests that had nice accessories but it wasn't really a viable way to make money. I dug out all the ores I could in hopes of selling all of them so I could unlock more grids and make my way down to the underworld to dig up hellstone. As I previously mentioned hellstone sells for quite a lot of money. I came back up to the surface, sold all of my ores and I managed to get like 40 gold. I literally had exactly 40 gold within my piggy bank. Using all of this moolah, I decided to access a brand new layer of the underworld. I dug further, got myself a heart crystal, got myself some obsidian, but we're still like two grids away from accessing hellstone. And I think the next grid is going to cost us nearly 80 gold to unlock. And where is Boyo gonna get all of this money? Well, scrunching up all of my February YouTube ad revenue, I grinded out as much mobs as I could, and I bought another grid. Once I came back to the surface, I was fighting King Slime and hopes of making more money and after that I proceeded to fight the Eye of Cthulhu over and over again to sell some demonite so we can get enough money to buy the very last grid before we can access Hellstone. Yeah I was like non-stop fighting the Eye of Cthulhu but once we had enough money I bought the very final grid to access the underworld and I was officially in. I got myself an obsidian skin potion and equipped it or I thought I did, but upon breaking the very first hellstone brick, I fell into lava and died, losing a precious one silver coin. How could I ever be so careless with my money? Anyways, this time I actually got myself an obsidian skin potion, and I went on the hunt for hellstone. I dug up quite literally every single hellstone ore there was within that grid. I don't think anyone is more hungry than the Boyo Boyo himself for a little bit of hellstone crime. 
crumbs. But yeah, this was going to be my strategy for selling as much Hellstone as I could and making pretty overpowered weapons early in the game so I can grind out bosses and make a bunch of money from selling resources. Of course, I crafted myself a bunch of Hellstone, made myself a fiery greatsword, and then we got invaded by goblins. So using the fiery greatsword, or I think it's called the volcano now, but that's kind of a silly name and I refuse to call it that. Reject modernity embrace terraria 1.3 but yeah we took out the goblin army and this is where i had the great idea to mine for more hellstone of course i got myself full hellstone armor got myself a molten pickaxe got myself the bow and then i sold all of my hellstone and i got tons and tons of money every single time i got more money i would just buy a brand new chunk of the underworld and mine more hellstone why would i do that well you see the wall of flesh likes to run horizontally across the underworld if you don't know mr boyo enjoyer and if we do not unlock more of the underworld, we can't really fight the wall of flesh. So this was essentially a way to kill two burns with one stone, as we could unlock more of the underworld to get more hellstone and get more gold coins. But at the same time, we would unlock more areas to make an arena to fight the wall of flesh. I fought King Slime a little bit more, then I summon in the Eye of Cthulhu and try to take that out, realizing that these very early hard mode bosses just aren't gonna cut it for making us money. So the nice target I had in sight was the Eater of Worlds. See, the Eater of Worlds is kind of like the Eye of Cthulhu on steroids, as the Eye of Cthulhu maybe drops you like 30 Demonite Ore, but the Eater of Worlds drops you over 100. So for the same amount of time, you get triple the money, which is stocks. This is very, this is a very stonk moment, right? So of course, this is what I had in mind. I proceed to keep on mining in the underworld and using the cheesy strategy of opening up more and more areas so we can fight the wall of flesh and getting more hellstone to make more money up until I ran out of obsidian and then had to find ways to get more obsidian by contacting water with lava. But you know, that didn't take too long. So I got that all in order. And then I proceeded to make myself an arena for the wall of flesh thinking that our underworld arena is quite big and we should probably fight the wall of flesh i mean anytime soon now by the way if you think i'm smart look at my hp we're not ready to fight the wall of flesh are we bro uh, i'm like this is not good anyways i kept on mining more hellstone as i unlocked another area and then i made myself the summon for the eater of worlds i made myself an infinite summon and then i went over to the corruption biome and just started farming out the eater of world this is going to be our best money making strategy of all time this is actually what elon musk used to become a billionaire just in case you did not know, yes, Elon Musk farmed the Eater of Worlds. I unlocked a couple more grids with all the new financial freedom I had acquired from defeating the Eater of Worlds and finding out the super money making glitch. I got myself more life crystals. And once I crafted five Eater of Worlds summons, I was actually able to craft a brand new item that would summon 10 Eater of Worlds at the same time. Unsurprisingly, this wasn't the best idea as half of them would run away. There was just like some bug with the Eater of Worlds or they would all combine into one and you wouldn't get like 10x the drops. But I mean, we still got a little bit more ore than usual so i guess it kind of paid off using all this money i decided to expand my wall of flesh arena and once i finally got myself a guide voodoo doll i chucked it into the lava and started fighting the wall of flesh i killed all of its little minions using the fiery great sword and then i spammed it with the hellstone explosive arrows using the molten fury we managed to take out the wall of flesh and then i crafted this one alter extracting everything from fargo's mutant mod which was the quality of life mod and it would essentially destroy every single altar within the world. So I used it and we blessed the world with titanium, cobalt, and mithril, and then I got attacked by a million wraiths. Once I had dueled it out with every single wraith within the terraria world, I decided to go through the treacherous pickaxe progression and get myself a cobalt pickaxe, then mithril pickaxe, and then no, not a titanium pickaxe because that is actually useless and you don't need to get one. What I got is a titanium forge, and then I started trying to craft myself full titanium armor. So I made myself a titanium sword, a titanium chest plate but there was not enough titanium within the grids of the underworld to get myself all the titanium that i needed to craft a full armor set so i went back to the old trusty eater of world farm strategy glitch in order to get myself as much gold as possible using hard mode items it was clearly far easier to get myself more money so that's exactly what i did and then i scoured the entire underworld for more titanium i got myself all the titanium that i needed to craft myself a full set of armor and at this point i decided i also need a pair of wings so i unlocked 
unlocked some of the grids that led to a sky island. Thankfully, it was actually very close to spawn, so I literally unlocked like two that led up into the heavens, and then one to the right as I saw some harpies flying about there, and I was actually directly led over to a sky island. This is where I defeated some harpies, got myself a giant harpy feather, and upon defeating some of the wyverns, I got myself enough souls of flight to craft myself a pair of harpy wings. As soon as it turned to nighttime, I summoned in the destroyer and tried to take him out melee style. This was a bit of a pain, and I mean, it wasn't going too well, so I decided to switch to the crossbow thingy weapon thing. What is it called? A repeater? Who even calls it that? It's a freaking crossbow. But we took out the destroyer, and then I summoned the twins right away. And since I had the harpy wings, I mean, this was a walk in the park. Come on, there was no challenge to this, but the challenge was trying to find the summon for Skeletron Prime. Because there was a bit of a glitch, a bit of a problem, a bit of a messy problem. We did not have all the grids unlocked over to Skeletron's dungeon. And as you know, the grids are quite small, so we're gonna have to spend quite a bit of money getting all the way to the dungeon, and also getting further down deep enough that's what she said. To actually get the skeletons to spawn, because they don't really spawn on the surface of the dungeon, do they? So I farmed the Eater of Worlds over and over again until I had enough to buy all the grids of the dungeon. Not all of them, just a few. Along with this, I picked up myself a bunch of water candles, which helped me make the battle cry that increased the mob spawn rates by 10 times, and could also decrease mob spawn rates. I went to go fight Skeletron Prime. This wasn't too difficult, and we managed to take him out, making the jungle now grow restless. Do you know what else grows restless? That is correct. My urge for you to subscribe to the channel or else you know what happens i will never upload ever again that is correct i am that petty no i'm kidding though i ended up defeating the eater of worlds a million more times to get myself more and more money yeah this is kind of a common theme within the playthrough so get ready for that and then i tried to unlock all of the jungle and i mean all of it this was costing a lot at this point it was more than a platinum to unlock each grid which was kind of a pain and i was searching for plantera's bulb and some chlorophyte and see the playthrough didn't take me too long to do so getting chlorophyte that was fully grown wasn't really the move as you kind of need to wait for it to all grow once you're in hard mode. Now at this point, I tried to farm out a bunch of turtle shells because, well, I needed better armor. And this is where I made a very big oopsie. You see, I thought I needed turtle armor in order to craft beetle armor, so I was under the assumption that I needed that, but I probably just could have went without it. But I kept on digging in the jungle until I got myself enough chlorophyte to actually craft the true Excalibur. Once I crafted that, I was kind of pumped because I thought I'd be ready to fight Plantera. All I needed now was to find the bulb. And you know how that that goes, don't you? you? You can't ever find Plantera's bulb when you actually need it. So I decided to try and kill the destroyer a bunch more times because there was like this one myth back in the day that you can get more bulbs to spawn if you defeat the mechanical bosses. I don't really know how true that is. If you know whether that's true, put that down in the comments below. Anyways, I did actually manage to find a bulb, which was kind of rare. So I built an arena around it and fought Plantera using the true knight's edge. I went straight into Golem's dungeon and without actually going to defeat Golem, I got myself a solar tablet and then waited for it to turn to daytime. Once it was daytime, I summoned in the Solar Eclipse, and uh, upon killing my very first Mothron, I got myself the Broken Hero Sword, which was pretty neat. I used that to craft the Terra Blade, and then I went straight into Golem's dungeon to go and fight Golem, of course, but... Unfortunately, I did not have the correct grids unlocked, so I had to go refight the Eater of Worlds over and over again to make more money so I could unlock the Summon for Golem. I fought the Destroyer a bunch more times, I fought a bunch of various different bosses, and once I had enough, I finally unlocked the dreaded Golem's Dungeon Temple thing. I went to fight Golem using my Vampire Knives and my Terra Blade, and it went pretty well. I defeated him, it was very easy to defeat. And once I got the Pixaw, I picked up his Summon and brought it all the way back to spawn so I could fight there. As soon as we defeated Golem a couple more times, I crafted myself a full set of beetle armor because I am a big baller boss just like that, that is correct, and then I went to go kill a couple more wyverns so I can craft myself a pair of beetle wings. I went over to the dungeon and started fighting the lunatic cultist, which was fairly easy, and once we had that, I had to go take out all the pillars. Now frankly, almost every single section was unlocked at this point because, mind you, I did have to make my way all the way to Skeletron's dungeon, which unlocked all the pillars to the right side of the world, and I also had to make my way all the way to the jungle previously, so I unlocked every single pillar area within the left side of the world. I started taking out all of the pillars, and we took out the vortex pillar first, then I went over to the solar pillar, died a million times, then decided to give up. Upon coming back, I took that out, then I took out the stardust pillar, 
crafting myself a couple of summons, and then I left the Nebula Pillar for last. I buffed up, defeated all of the Nebula Pillar enemies, took out the Nebula Pillar, and now my screen was shooken. Mr. Squid God spawned in. So, what did I do? I started blasting all of his eyeballs with the Solar Eruption. That is correct. This boss fight frankly wasn't too difficult. Of course, it's normal Terraria. I probably should have played on Expert, but hey, a challenge is a challenge, and this is focused on money, not my skills. If you want to watch my skills, go watch my Inferno mode playlist, okay? Like, stop judging. I'm good at Terraria. I just don't want to spend a long time playing. It. So yeah, we took out all of his hands, took out his eyeball, bada bing bada boom, his core is open and I go straight into it, just like you, when you see cake at the family dinner party. I ate his heart up and took out the Moon Lord. At the very end of the playthrough, I actually opened up my map to show how much of the world I had discovered, so you can go check that out. And this is apparently all you need to beat Terraria. You just need the jungle, the underworld, and Skeletron's dungeon. I don't even think Skeletron's dungeon is actually necessary. So yeah, this has been Terraria Gridlocked, my own edition, inspired by Happy Days. Consider subscribing to the channel if you're new. This has been Boyo. Peace out.